Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna be taking a look and testing out the Vitalin T7. Now this is their first entry into the market with a 26 inch dual suspension or full suspension, however you wanna call it, fat tire e-bike. And we're gonna put it through its paces today, see how it performs both uphills, what kind of speed it has, how the suspension is, the goods, the bads, everything you need to know about this bike to see if it's right for you and to help you make an informed decision. Now this is the chameleon color as they call it, which is color changing when the sunlight hits it it's awesome i'll try to give you guys some good views of it but there's some greens in there some reds in there some yellows just a bunch of different colors blacks it's an awesome paint job now this paint job is going to cost you a hundred dollars more than their other two colors and you can check it out down below in the description to see the current pricing and the current coupon codes. And normally why I don't mention it, a lot of people ask me, is because prices and coupons change all the time. So it's best to just check out the link and see what the current price and coupon is. Now, with that being said, they did send me this bike for testing and review. And if it did help you out and you do wanna help support the channel, please use the link down below when you make your purchase. And that's what helps support the channel, helps me make a small commission from it at no extra cost to you, and helps me keep creating these videos. Now, I hate to even mention it, but I do wanna mention if you do wanna do that and support the channel, make sure you go through the link first before Googling Vitalin's website. Because if you Google their website and then you come back and use my link, I will not get the commission. Uh, it's the only company that I work with that does that most other companies don't give me a problem with it but just something i wanted to mention if you do want to support the channel make sure it's organically from that device and if you already googled them use a different device to order if you want to support the channel something that you already didn't google their site from if not no big deal i'm just hoping this helps you make an informed decision but without further ado guys let's get into it with this 750 watt Bifang 20 amp hour bike Let's see how it performs. Oh, and there will also be a link down below to my accessories that I always use, like my cell phone holder. I don't know if they're gonna make a rack for the back, but I'll put down below the bags that I use, chain locks, alarms, air tags, air tag holders, things like that. So please check it out if you're interested in any of that stuff as well. All right, so here we go, everyone. This is a 750 watt Bifang motor. We're gonna do throttle only. And this bike does have a very gradual start. It's not gonna throw you off when you hit the throttle. Now the Vitalin, U7 that I reviewed went up this hill at nine miles per hour, no slower than nine. Um, the Vitalin I7 was 10. Let's see what this one is. And it's looking like nine miles per hour. So about the same as the Vitalin U7. I'm getting all these, these bikes confused. They're so similar. I7, U7, T7, hey, there's a nice little deer. Whew, scared the crap out of me, they always do. But we're gonna uh, see how this bike performs overall. I might go on a very long ride today, but so far, so good. Nine miles per hour, and that's pretty good for 750 watt bike. That's about average. Some of the more powerful ones will go up at around 10, 11 miles per hour, I think is the, the fastest one that I got that'll go up that hill with a 750 watt rear hub motor. And this one performed at nine miles per hour, so not bad overall. So let's test out the brakes going down this hill and see how they perform. Now it is using Tektro hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotor on both the front and the rear of the bike. So far the brakes seem really good. No squeaks and squeals and that's probably a big part to do with the type of brake pads that they're using. So let's just use just this back brake, feather it down here get it nice and hot and see if they still work when we get to the bottom. So let's try it out here when we get closer to the bottom here. Not too bad. I feel like I did lose some braking power there from them heating up, which is normal probably for this type of brake pad and that's probably why they're so quiet so a lot of times depending on the type of brake pads that e-bikes use sometimes they'll use like a ceramic or a metallic brake pad which gives you better gripping power but they're a lot noisier and they hold up better to heat and will stop you better when they're wet some bikes use more of like an organic mix which will give you quieter brakes and still has good stopping power but when they get hot or wet they lose a little bit of power so there's different things there but that's something easily that you guys could cha change out uh, you know you could play around with different pads different compounds and see what works right for you whether you have hills or not but so far seems pretty good we'll try them out again on a longer hill using both brakes Whew. pretty fast so far 
better grab on with two hands. There's a little bit of gravel there. And this is just throttle only, but we'll uh, test it when we get a longer straight stretch and see what kind of max speed this bike has. But so far, so good. I can tell you this, full speed with just throttle. So that's nice. It's not limited to 20 miles per hour, which is uh, questionably legal. But honestly, that's the way I like it. <laughs> so normally, a uh, class three e-bike is capped at 20 miles per hour with throttle and it does not look like this one is all right so we're gonna test the brakes out down this long hill here gonna get them nice and warm coming down here and then try them out at the bottom and see if they stop really really quiet on the brakes though which is kind of crazy because when i got this bike the front rotor had a really really bad bend in it from shipping and i was able to straighten it out and still use that rotor and i don't have any squeaks or anything which is crazy all right yeah easily easily lock them up so very nice on the brakes here guys so one thing i want to show you which is really cool and different about this bike that i've never seen it has like an auto assist level so you can see when i stop it's in assist level one i have it in auto assist and when you start pedaling it's going to automatically bump up the pedal assist levels depending on the speed you're in. It's going to kind of bump up gradually. So six, seven, I'll quit pedaling and it'll stay there at seven because I'm going uh, 11 miles per hour, which I don't know, that seems kind of low on speed for it to be in seven, but it bumps up in your PAS levels depending on the speed you're at. Now, it's kind of cool, but I don't see myself using that much unless you're always riding in pedal assist five or nine or whatever you have it set to which is another thing i want to mention is you can adjust this from three five six or nine which is kind of odd that it's six and not seven usually they're three five seven and nine but you can have three five six or nine different levels of assist and if you're always riding at that higher level then that's kind of cool i guess to be able to do that and set it on auto assist but as soon as you change your pedal assist level it does deactivate that auto assist and you have to go back in the settings again to reactivate it so really nice on the pedal assist levels here one is about seven miles per hour and there is no adjustment for each level individually but you can change the levels of the uh, the speeds by increasing or decreasing how many pas levels you have so here we go we're going to test out max speed on this straight stretch and it looks like 28 miles per hour is where it cut my power that's with pedaling now let's try just throttle and it's looking like the same 28 miles per hour Ooh, that dog scared the crap out of me good thing it was chained up so 28 miles per hour with pedaling or throttle and we're going to try this on a, on a hill i'm actually going on a really long ride out through the country today so we'll try this on a long hill yeah i felt it cut there about 27 to 28 miles per hour is where the throttle cuts power. And this bike does have a 13 to 32 tooth freewheel in the back. It's an eight speed freewheel, which is nice. This is max speed at 28 miles per hour. And it has a 53 tooth chain ring in the front. So a little bit higher than average, which makes it really nice for pedaling at high speeds. This is max speed here. I don't feel like I'm ghost pedaling or running out of pedal. So very, very nice on the setup here for high speed pedaling at class three speeds. Very nice. It definitely gets up and rolls pretty good. And we'll see what kind of battery level I get at the end. I started with a full battery. We'll see what voltage I'm at at the end of my ride and how many miles I went. So make sure you guys stick around to see that. And wait till you guys see the suspension that's on this bike in the back. The back suspension has a three-way lockout and it has an air suspension which is nice so it's adjustable pretty cool suspension pretty similar to the Himaway Cobra Pro on the back as far as the rear suspension goes and then we'll talk about the front suspension a little bit too later when we stop and go over the specs and features and details of the bike which will be a little bit later on in the video you guys don't want to miss that all right we're going to see what kind of speed we can maintain on this main road here on this hill and I forgot to mention it earlier, but it does show you the wattage output. Right now it's outputting 1,256 watts, 1,270. So pretty good output. 
out of this 25 amp controller Ugh, can't talk guys 25 amp controller i did take it out of the bike and did verify that it has a 25 amp controller really nice to see so it peaks out somewhere in the 1200 watt range what's nice about having power like this i'm able to maintain a pretty nice speed coming up this hill so that i can hurry up get up here to the side road that i want to get on because i don't like being on these main roads too much back here in the country there we go there's the side road i'm looking for downshift a little bit to help it out here still maintaining 17 to 18 miles an hour and i am pedaling a little bit helping it out getting some good exercise guys really good exercise it's a good burn not really pushing too hard just enough to get a little exercise shift back up everything's really flawless between the shifting very nice trying it through some grass here i did notice every once in a while that rear fender is making some noise right there all right guys so let's check out all the specs and features of the brand new vitalin t7 and you can see that frame shine in there all those different colors that's awesome that's amazing i was a little bummed out in shipping it got banged up a little bit some scratches here but they are supposed to be sending me some touch-up paint for this and there was one little scratch over here as well but beautiful paint job though Another thing while we're on the paint, another thing I like is up here, everything's real nice and clean, no welds visible here and here. Now down below, once you get down to here, you can see the welds. It's not as clean down here, but really clean looking on the frame, A+. And while we're down here, look at this suspension. This comes with a DNM AO8RC air suspension shock in the back and has an air adjuster here. So you can air the shock up or down depending on your weight. It has three different modes here. This is the softest suspension here this is like a half lockout so it stiffens it up just slightly and then this locks the rear suspension out completely and then you also have this center adjuster here for your rebound turning it counterclockwise is going to make it a faster rebound and turning it clockwise is going to make it slower rebound so once the shot compresses it'll come up back up slower so really nice rear suspension here on the front suspension you have a mozo suspension fork now in my opinion this was the only downfall so far that i could find to this bike was the front suspension right on the sticker on the back side it says it's only rated for 32 kilometers per hour which is right around 19 or 20 miles per hour so they did cheapen out on the front suspension on this bike i did mention it to them and they did say that they were thinking about upgrading it in the future now on this ride today i did not have any issues with it at all it was very soft and comfortable however hitting some bumps and some jumps around my house i noticed that the front shock only had about 55 millimeters of travel which you could see right here and it was bottoming out a little bit easily on that so it's, this isn't going to be a bike that you're going to take downhill or up over jumps and through a really really hard mountain trail but for casual riding around town hitting potholes hitting small bumps and things like that you're not going to have any issues with it however i would have liked to have seen maybe 100 millimeters of travel or so at least on this front suspension but like i said hopefully they update that in the future but i think it's somewhat fitting for the price of the bike but i think it would have fit a lot more people if they would have had a little bit better of a suspension on the front now with that being said it is a hydraulic spring suspension you do have some adjustments with a lockout here and a preload here however it didn't seem like this preload was really doing too much up here on the handlebars you have a nice set of double locking faux leather grips horn button next to that but the horn does sound a little weird it has like a slight at the end of it you have your control pad here for controlling your different pedal assist levels turning the bike on in your different modes a really nice display in the center and what i really love about this display is it's very easy to go into the settings by double tapping the m button and you could change so many different things so easily it tells you exactly what they are power indicator you can go from voltage or percent that auto assist and what i absolutely love it's about time a lot of companies are putting automatic cruise control on their bikes which i really don't like and it's kind of a safety hazard this one has cruise control but you could go in the menu and turn it on or off so you can have it set to automatically engage cruise control once you get up to a certain speed with your throttle and are steady for so many seconds or if you don't like that you can go in the settings and turn it off i think every bike that comes with an automatic cruise control should have that feature 
to be able to turn it off or at least to be able to activate it or not use it on the display pad like the electrics. This does have a temperature and a clock right on the display. It's 89 degrees and about 2.04 p.m. So it's nice to see that it does tell you that, but very nice, very well done as far as that goes. And like I said, about the pedal assist levels, you can go in and change it from three, five, six, or nine. And like I said earlier, you can't adjust each individual level to different percentages like you can on some other bikes. But whenever you do change it to have three levels or nine levels, that is gonna change the speed of each of your levels. Now, pedal assist one, no matter what you have it in, is gonna be seven miles per hour, but it is gonna adjust the other levels accordingly. For example, when you have it set from zero to five levels, which is what I typically have my bike set to, one is seven, two is 16, three is 24, four is 27, and five is 28 miles per hour. But if you change that to nine, you now have one is seven, but instead of two being 16 miles per hour, which is pretty high, two is nine miles per hour. So that's really nice that you have seven or nine if you're riding at slower speeds, trying to match your kid on the bike trail or trying to match somebody else on another bike. It's really nice that you can select that feature to have nine miles per hour. Three would be 11. So it goes in two mile per hour increments until you get up to four, then it bumps up to 16. Five is 20, six is 24. And then I noticed seven, eight, and nine were about 28 miles per hour. So I didn't notice much difference between seven, eight, and nine when you have it set to nine. Uh, maybe it kicks on a little stronger when you're in nine, but overall really nice, really good programmability there in the display. Over here on the left-hand side, you have a half grip twist throttle. Now your throttle is gonna give you full power in any assist level other than zero. So you have full use of your power anytime you want. It has an eight speed trigger shifter here, which leads down to the 13 to 32 tooth free wheel in the back, coming up the chain to a 53 tooth chain ring in the front. Really nice large chain ring. And I absolutely love these pedals. Really, really grippy pedal there, guys. You're not gonna slip off of those very easily. And they are aluminum, which is really nice. This bike does come with a set of front and rear fenders. However, I did notice the rear fender flapping a little bit, making some noise, hitting some bumps. So not gonna be super strong on the back fender if you're riding it hard, but it is nice to see that they give you the fenders with it. Now there is a mount in the back for a rear rack. As of now, I'm not sure if they're gonna have that available in the future or not, but it's nice to see there's an option there to mount one. The front fender would have been nice if it came down just a little bit longer and actually mounted to the fork to give you a little more support, but that's better than nothing being there. A little flappy, but better than nothing. Up on the front, they have a nice headlight, which is pretty bright during the day, and it says Vitalin right in the center, which is pretty nice to see. However, there is no rear tail light or brake light on this bike. Would have been nice or maybe they'll have one in the future. I think there might have been a wire when I took the controller out, I can't remember exactly, but that would be nice if maybe they can offer one in the future that you could put on a rack or something. Would be really nice to see for safety. For the braking system, this is using a set of Tektro hydraulic disc brakes coming down to 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike. And this bike is powered by a 20 amp hour, 48 volt battery in the frame and is using a 25 amp controller that's behind this cover here, going to the 750 watt Bafang rear hub motor. Now, one thing about that controller that I wanna mention when I took it out, I noticed that the motor wire and the hydraulic brake wire comes down through here. And the way it was routed up through here, the plastic on this cover was kind of pinching the motor wire a little bit. So I took my Dremel tool and just Dremeled it out just slightly on the plastic just to give it a little bit more room for that wire because I didn't like the way that that was pinching that wire. Now it may have not caused an issue, but I, like I said, I didn't want it to in the future. So I went ahead and ground that out just to give it a little bit more room in there to move. And now I don't think I will have an issue with it. One other thing I noticed about the motor wire coming out, it kind of shoots out towards the back and then swoops around to go up the front. Would have been nice if it was on the other angle coming down this way, already going towards the front so that it wasn't such of a sharp angle coming out of that axle there. Again, I'm not sure if this is gonna create any problems, just a few things that I've seen that would be nice if it was updated in the future. And as always, you know I'm thorough with my reviews and I like to point out anything that I notice. Oh, and I almost forgot, it is using a Shimano Altus derailleur to shift through those gears, which is definitely a step up above entry level, so nice good derailleur there. And a lot of people always wonder what this blue ring on your shock is. That's to show you how much your shock is compressing if you're trying to adjust it, seeing how much compression you're getting out of it. You put it up there and then when it compresses, 
it will stay down to as far as it compressed and that will show you how much it compresses. That's good for setting your initial adjustment with your air valve according to your weight to see how much preload you have on the shock. Now the seat height on this bike will go down to about 32 and a half inches for the minimum seat height and the maximum seat height is about 37 and a half inches. Really nice on the seat height here. I'm five foot seven and I actually have it set up about two and a half inches for me to have a good riding experience on this bike. Yeah, it might still be a little bit low for my leg extension, but that's the angle I need to GoPro. A lot of you always ask, which I don't mind guys. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate any interaction with my videos. Actually, it helps them out. So please comment down below. Let me know what you think about this bike, what you think about this color. If you've been considering a dual suspension bike like this or like something else, and uh, just let me know your opinions but comments are more than welcome. I try to answer them all. But overall guys, beautiful bike. Oh, and it does come with a three amp charger too, which is a little bit higher than the two amp that a lot of bikes come with. And it is supposed to have Samsung cells in it. It says right on the side of the battery, uh, Samsung cells inside, but absolutely love this color changing paint. Still just a little disappointed about them scratches on there, but I did mention all this to them. So hopefully they can package them a little bit better in the future. It does have a nice heavy duty adjustable kickstand here as well on this side, which is nice to see. And last but not least, it is sitting on a pair of CST BFT 26 by four inch fat tires. So overall guys, really nice bike, really fun to ride, really fast, lots of power up those hills, no issues at all with the ride or the ride quality. But like I said, would have been nice to see just slightly better front suspension on the bike. But let's get back to the ride test. We're currently about eight miles into it. Still got to test out that suspension though. That'll be later. All right, trying out the suspension through this field and the rear fender rattle when I hit some bumps. Not doing it yet. It's got to be a pretty good bump. So far, so good. See, so riding like this with these kind of bumps and stuff, really nice on this suspension. Like I said, it's not until you get into some crazy bumps. Let's see if we can find a few close. No, see, stuff like that's nothing. A few small ones. Those are good. So when you get into the really big ones that this suspension is not going to be too good in the front only basically if you jump which i wouldn't recommend doing on this bike all right so i do have it in the auto assist mode and to be honest i really don't i, I don't know i don't see much reason to be using the auto assist uh, maybe from a stop it might get you up to nine easier and smoother but going up a hill here showing you how this performs under a load and under a hill. Now I'm like one, like 175 or 180, I think is about what I weigh. Yeah, 175. I almost forgot there for a second. Uh, so 18 miles an hour there, cresting up over the hill now. So you will lose a little bit of speed, obviously, on hills, but this bike performs really well so far overall on this ride. I'm 11.27 miles into this ride. On the display, it shows. 11 miles so just slightly off on the odometer close enough for me though uh, let's test out the speed on the odometer with the gps speed 30 on gps 29 on they're both showing 29 now so very very accurate as far as the odometer goes I mentioned earlier where you have full throttle and every pedal assist level well when I got the bike it was limited to each level and you're able to go in the settings as well and change that so you can limit your throttle to your PAS speed or uh, unlink it to your pedal assist level so you can have full throttle no matter what really nice option there love being able to have adjustability on these bikes I don't know why most bikes don't allow you to do this. Got a good headwind, but I'm still able to maintain 26. This is a slight incline here. Beautiful ride today out through the country. Let's try these bumps. Potholes. Not 
Not bad other than that rear fender rattling a lot. Over some train tracks here. Nice and smooth. All right, we're gonna test out this suspension on here. Just riding off about an eight inch curb first. And you can see, took that like nothing. Very easily, let's go back up on it. And I did fill it bottom out there. Let's try this again. Good on the way down. And bottomed out kind of on the way up. So, like I said guys, this suspension's all right for most riding. I mean, this is gonna be perfect for things like this. This is only about a three inch bump. Gonna be very nice. It's just if you go off some really big jumps that it's not going to do so well because you will bottom out. But stuff like this, no problem at all. Very smooth. All right, guys, here we go up the steepest hill in town. See how it does. And I think I'm in about gear three or four, I believe. Definitely have to help it out. No problem though, right up it. I don't feel like it would have made it with just throttle, so I did have to help it out. And like I said, I think I was in about gear four there. Should have actually been in a lower gear. I was actually in gear three, guys, so yeah. Could have been a little easier if I was in gear one, but not bad at all. All right, here we go, last long hill before I get back to my house. And I can't wait because I am thirsty. I've already put on 22 miles on this battery. And when I get back, we'll see what voltage it's at. Um, currently back there sitting at a standstill, it was at about 46 volts, a little over 46. So we're gonna see how this does up this long hill and see if it starts limiting me power. Looks like my current total peak output right now is about 1150 watts but that's with the battery below 50% currently. So far, so good. And that's pretty awesome for having, putting on over 22 miles and still having this kind of power up this hill. Looks like 1140 watts now. Or no, 1,040 watts. And looks like it might be starting to limit me a little bit. But that could be because the battery's getting down a little low. Looks like 844 watts. So it's starting to limit me there, coming up there. Either the controller's getting hot and limiting me after all that riding, or it's just the battery's getting down closer to being uh, like on a lower voltage, almost dead, and it's limiting me. But th that was on a, a pretty heavy load there for a while. So my battery voltage came back up sitting at about 46 volts. Yeah, it's definitely limiting me now. So I'll take it easy on the way back and we'll see if I have uh, full power with throttle once we get back uh, up here at this big parking lot. All right, guys. Well, it's definitely limiting me. <laughs> so I'm at 45.6 volts under load and it's only putting out like 400 and some watts, max watts right now. The controller might be a little overheated from coming up all those hills. Almost at 23 miles here on this battery charge. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of work pedaling up this last hill manually because it's not giving me a lot of power. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> this is the hill I come up in the beginning of all my videos. Whew. It's only giving me 390 watts. Oh yeah, this is a workout. <sighs> I wasn't expecting that. Wow, Whew. All right, almost home stretch. Whew. All right, guys, <laughs> I made it back home. 
after a 23.4 mile ride on GPS and 23.1 on the display. I'd say that was a su success other than the last quarter mile, <laughs> but the battery sitting here is at 46.4 volts, which on my chart that I usually use, gives me a rough idea, is about 45%. So I would say that the controller or the motor is hot, which is probably limiting me in power, but that was the first time at the very end that it limited me. So very happy with that. I usually don't ride that hard that many miles out through the country on a hot day like today, <laughs> but uh, felt like giving it a good ride. That was definitely a good test. So I'm gonna give it until later on today or tomorrow to see if everything cools down and see if I have the full power back and I'll be right back with the results. All right, everyone. So I gave it about an hour to cool down and it's now outputting 1144 watts. So back up to full power. So it must have had a temperature shut off. If the controller gets hot or if the motor gets hot, it will uh, limit your power. I've had that happen on a few different bikes. So good to see that it has some sort of protection in there from keeping the controller from burning out. And it didn't do that until about 22 or 23 miles into my ride. So very good as far as performance goes, in my opinion, on this bike. But just keep that in mind. If you are pushing it hard, it may start limiting your power. But let me know what you thought down below in the comments. I really appreciate all your comments. Like I said, please use the link if you're deciding on purchasing one or check out some of my other videos if you think something else might be the bike for you. Maybe it'll help you make an informed decision. Until then, please consider subscribing and I will see all of you around on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.